Hey guys, today we are going to talk about 10 cards that have recently gone up. And these are interesting ones. So we have Living End, and Living End has went straight to the moon. And hopefully we will see it reprinted in... I don't know if it's Iconic Masters. I, I don't feel like it could be reprinted in that. But in a product in the near future, because it needs a reprint. It's almost a $30 card now and a $70 foil. At one time, the foil was worth $2,100, something insane. I like the card. It is always one of those fringe playable decks that is decently good, and it has its own audience that loves it. And as long as people love playing the deck, it will still see value. Living End is one of those mechanics that are is extremely powerful. Suspend is a... Even when it came out, I remember it came out, I was like, wow, this is a broken mechanic. And it turned out to be even more broken with cards that could cast it for quote-unquote free. Now, Living End is one of a bunch of suspend cards. They have largely gone up. There is a green one, and the green one is so powerful from the beginning, pretty much from the beginning of modern, it was banned. Hypogenesis, I believe, was one, was allowed to be played in one Pro Tour, and then it was just gone. I like that one. Should it ever be banned? That's actually the most powerful suspend mechanic, or unbanned. Now, the other card is All is Dust. This card saw a reprint, I believe it was also a GP. If memory serves me right, the reprint is a GP promo and foil. Great card, very good in the modern decks that play it, which would be Tron decks. Also good in uh, Adrazi decks. The card has been quite interesting in terms of its dynamic and how fast it could recover going to type in all those dust right now. I'm almost certain that this card was reprinted one more time. Yeah, I was. Modern Masters 2015. So it was reprinted as a GP. Let's see. Rise of the Drazi. Yes, it has a different artwork with Emiko as a all those dust Grand Prix promo. And it also has the modern 2015 Modern Masters 2015 reprint. So it has been reprinted twice. Still a very nice card and something that will always be powerful in the Commander kitchen table formats. This is pretty much what you want to drop on 7 if you are playing Aldrazi's at all. Okay, moving on to the next card. Wow, this card has snuck up in price i remember it being a big deal it hit 20 as you can see due to the reprint it hit 20 dollars and now it is back to 41 dollars which is kind of near the all-time high land destruction is always good there are some mechanics that should they be cheap enough like molten rain molten rain is a good one i'm going to check up how much molten rain is today it is a common from and obviously the mage is much better. So Molten Rain as a foil is $5. As a Modern Masters 2017 foil, it's only $2. That's not bad. Like that's definitely something I would look at. But a mage has other benefits. The main benefit being is a creature. So it can be recurred to destroy something else. Uh, there is a ton. You could even play in Coco decks from the sideboard. And hitting two of these is pretty good on turn four. Instant speed. Very flexible card and one of the better sideboard cards. Now that in fact some of the sideboard cards, Grave Digger's Cage, has gotten really cheap. Stony Silence. So the price has to move somewhere. Talking about price movements that I did not realize. Did not realize this card became that much more expensive. I'm going to go ahead and check. It looks like Modern Masters was printed as a Invocation. It was printed in Alara Reborn. It was printed in Modern Masters 2013, which is an older edition. And it was printed in as a GP promo. Lots of reprints. 
However, the biggest one being Modern Masters 2013, which means that there's actually not that much supply. I'm looking at the Star City Games page right now, and it's pretty much all sold out. Alara Reborn sold out. Alara Reborn Foil sold out. The Invocation at 45 is pretty much the only thing near Mint not shown, sold out. And then they have one copy of the Get Grand Prix promo, which in my opinion is not as good looking. So I'm looking at it right now. Yeah, I, I, I prefer the original one, especially in Foil. So the cards do go up. I don't want you guys to get the impression that everything goes down, everything's being reprinted into oblivion. As long as it survives reprint, it's good. And some cards are so silly that they just are not going to be reprinted. Like Bear Umbrum. This card has steadily and steadily gone up in price. Uh, it's a chart is very different from Fumer Mater Mage or Mouse Room Post where it goes up and down and up and down. This one has a steady growth, which tells you it's ed 8 So whenever you see a chart like this that is very steady, it means it's actually a good card people are playing in ed 8 It's demand. The price is being set by the demand. So Bear Umbrum, very good. Untapping all, all lands you control is good. You do have to attack with it, which subjects it to dying, which is not the best. Uh, I would rather have an effect. Now, I mean, the, my favorite effect is Ban, right? Uh, Prophet of Krufix would be the better card because then you don't have to attack with it. You can just keep on the defensive, which would be amazing because you're blue anyway in that color, but that card is banned. So cards that are similar to cards that got banned are always very good. And this steady incline means you could have picked it up any time and it would still be very good, unless it's reprinted, of course. Stoneforge Mystic. Hmm, this is an interesting one. Something that I would look at because price-wise, this is a very low point. It has gone up slightly, but you can see the decline is quite big. So Stoneforge Mystic is a card I love, I love, I love, I love. And let me check up something on the supply of this card. It might be one of the better speculations, but it's a gamble, right? It's always a gamble, and the reason it is a gamble... Let's see, I'm looking at Modern Stoneforge Mystic. Yep, still on the ban list. I believe she is not that strong. When you have Death Shadow, a one-drop that can put a ton of pressure on you, what you are doing is you're not tutoring out stuff to play later. You have to deal with it now. So Stoneforge Mystic would be one that I expect to have some chat about being unbanned. And chat a lot of times is enough. Now Gisela, again, you guys know this is one of my favorite cards. She has finally ticked up, started ticking up. The reason is it was printed in a commander deck. The commander deck was widely opened and... Com printing something in a Commander Angel deck is not great for the card because so much of it is out there. You can still probably find it. At so my local Barnes & Noble does not have these Commander cards. But that being said, I found a Barnes & Noble, which is in... I was traveling to Austin. It was on the way to Austin near the... Mm, I'm trying to remember where it is, but it doesn't matter. But Barnes & Noble does tend to have older Magic card sets. I saw uh, older Commander decks. I saw um, even the, what, a Fat Pack from, what was that set? A fat Pack from the set after Fate Reforged. I saw a Fat Pack from Fate Reforged. I just feel like that they don't really know what they have a lot of times. So Barnes & Noble is a great place to pick up Commander stuff. Little overpriced, you're not going to get the cheapest price, that would be online, but it's interesting to find stuff anyway, it's always a lot of fun. Kind of like a flea market effect, to f you never know what you're going to get. Okay, so one lesson I've learned is when you have the option of buying something, let's say for $9, and it looks amazing, and it is a highly played card, 
buy the most premium edition you can afford. That is either foil, full art, might even be invocations or masterpieces. I do have to reassess masterpieces because now that we're not getting as many of them, and one of the interesting parts about the masterpiece, they might, if I know Wizards of the Coast correctly, what they might do is they might limit it too much. So they're really bad at balancing stuff. They either go one way or the other way, and they're really easily convinced uh, by Reddit pretty much. To Reddit says, Wizard Coast, we need to... Wizard Coast like, oh, we're going to do modern. We're not going to do any more modern PTs. And then the audience like, no, we want modern PCs. And Wizard Coast, yes, yes, we'll do more modern PTs. And then eventually they silently get rid of it. The same can be said about these bands. We want this band. Okay, we'll ban it for you. Oh, okay, we're going to ban this other stuff. Oh, I mean, even the Guardian... It had to be a split decision, right? They chose to not ban it, and then two days later, the emergency banned it. Mm. And as usual, we will end these videos from now on with a reserve list buyout, which actually stuck. A while ago, I talked about this card. It's okay. Yeah, I put okay in quotations. But it's on a reserve list. And it sees like a tiny bit of EDH play, I believe. I don't. I have copies of this because I have copies of every bulk card from these older sets. I have dozens and dozens of copies of all these cards, and it always surprises me which one. I if I were to like look at my bulk and pick one from Weatherlight like a month ago, it would not be this one, right? This Weatherlight had some interesting cards in it that are also on a reserve list. So maybe it's time to pick those up because you can still get them on pennies of a dollar and then should they ever go up, you know, they spike up to eight dollars, which is pretty insane. In Europe, of course, it's always still the regular price. Anyway, that is it. Leave me a comment below. Bye, guys.